Here's my game of the day from round two of the Bill Chess Festival, and this was a fascinating encounter between David Navarra and Alexander Morozevich, two of the most exciting players in this tournament. In the first round, David Navarro drew. Alexander Morozevich lost, well, a bit of a, a catastrophe against Ho Yi Fan, sacrificed a piece, but got really nothing for it. So how would he react in round two? Well, he remained true to himself and played this very, uh, well, double-edged Benoni. So here we go, it's a uh, typical Fianchetto variation. Absolutely main line. And actually the variation that Navarra played, this bishop f4, is exactly what No Studer played against Peter Lecco. And if you remember, Lecco in the first round played this very interesting continuation with knight e4, opening up this bishop. And after knight d2, just sacrificed an exchange straight away and, and well, Lecco got fantastic compensation. But uh, Morozevich went his own way. He played knight a6. And he he said after the game that, uh, I mean, he thought for, well, already just about 12 minutes over this move. And he said afterwards that he last uh, prepared this in, I think, 2011, so a long time ago. He's not playing that much classical chess at the moment. But anyway, he, uh, he had a few ideas up his sleeve. So rookie one, this is pretty normal move, of course, you want to perhaps play e4. The only thing with rookie one is that it weakens this f2 square, and so often the Benoni, f2 and b2 are, are very sensitive squares, and we'll watch out for that later on in the game. But this has all been played before, although I have to say I, I feel this is a, a very promising Benoni. I used to play the Benoni in my wild youth. And this Fianchetto variation was never one that I was particularly concerned about. Seems to me that uh, Black has pretty good play here. Well, already Black would very much like to play this knight into e4, which just gets the, the bishops um, flowing across the board. So that's why White plays knight h4, and then the bishop goes back to d7. But in a sense, I feel that black has kind of gained a move here because that knight is, is very much out of play on h4. It needs to come back into the game. Of course, bishop d6 um, has to be considered here. But, well, there, there are all kinds of interesting things going on involving queen b6 hitting the bishop and the b-pawn. And th this is a very interesting move as well. Knight g4 with some very funny ideas of, of looking here, looking with, still with queen b6, but maybe g5, attacking the knight, and also taking away the retreat square for the bishop. Um, very interesting, very complicated lines, but black certainly has good compensation. Navarro thought for 12 minutes, and he played e4, which has been played before, but after the game, well, Morozevich kind of tutted over this move. Um, he felt that Black had pretty good play after this, principally because of the weakness of the d3 square, which is a classic problem for White in these Bononi variations. He considered b5, which has actually been played before. Also a very interesting move. But he, after, well, 22 minutes thought, went for c4, which is the, the typical Benoni move. It also makes room for that knight to come to c5 and into d3. Now that looks like a great Benoni to me. In the meantime, this knight looks so out of play on h4. Compare these two knights at the side of the board. One has fantastic prospects. The other, well, hmm, what are you going to do with it? Well, let's see what happens. Queen d2. Well, by the way, of course, you know, bishop d6 is always possible, but you have to watch out for that queen b6 move, which would have hit b2. But now this is covered. So knight c5. 
So Morozevich simply gives up that d6 pawn, and now the knight flies in to this incredible square. Some people call this knight, it uh, turns into an octopus with its eight tentacles stretching out. And I think this is already a very difficult position for white, actually, um, because of the weakness of these points, because of the potential threat of playing queen b6 to attack this bishop. Um, the, the t so many tactics are, are um, in black's favour. So Navarra, instead of attempting to defend his rook, simply played knight f3. And typically, we've seen this in, in Leko's first round game, Morozevich did not take the exchange. Now, this would take all the pressure off White's position. Um, the bishop could retreat, and then these two central pawns suddenly look very powerful indeed, backed up by the bishop and the knight. I mean, White's position is a, is a picture of harmony here. But no that would make life so easy for white. Instead, knight g4, attacking this f2 square. And rook e2 played, so defending this one. And now queen b6. And this is already looking very serious indeed. So, as I said at the start, Always in the Bononi, you have to watch out for these two sensitive squares. And White has to be terribly careful here. Well, here's a typical line. So, for example, if um, if h3, for example, then Black has bishop h6, attacking the queen. The queen moves to the side, and knight takes pawn. And if this is taken, then suddenly... The queen is gone. So let's go back to this position. So here, Navarra played bishop f4. Of course, the, the bishop was attacked as well, just to add to white's problems. And now, well, this is very simple. Just uh, a little exchanging. And you can see if rook takes knight, then bishop takes and black wins material. So rook c1, defending the knight, and now knight d3 hitting the rook, so the rook has to maintain the protection of the knight, and, well, black has a draw here, if he wants already, with knight b4, rook has to go back so he can repeat the position uh, with knight d3. Uh, there was, apart from knight b4, uh, there was also a very interesting continuation with b5, with the idea of simply steaming those pawns down the board. Now we have a, a double-edged situation with, of course, white has this wonderful central pawn uh, pawn duo. It's probably very good for black, but and Morozevich was, was sorely tempted by this. But it was incredibly complicated, and in the end he decided to be quite materialistic and simply take the pawn that was on offer, because black can win a pawn now with a very simple combination here and knight takes pawn just exploiting this pin of course if pawn takes knight then the rook is dropping here and the problem is that if rook takes pawn then we can take and then black wins in exchange so all the tactics are working in black's favor in this position so that means that after this, knight takes pawn, the rook is attacked, just has to move away. Morozevich thought that rook a3 was probably the best chance, but, well, black is a clear pawn up here and has excellent winning chances, as in the game. I don't think it makes a huge amount of difference, actually. He just felt that rook a3 would have been a bit trickier. But rook c1 played. Knight takes f4, of course, you know, this damages white's kingside pawn. So not only is black a pawn up, but you know, white's kingside pawns don't look very attractive at all. And now full steam ahead on the queen side, this wonderful pawn duo. 
coming down the boards. And Morozevich's technique was superb, actually. He'd realised that this end game was very powerful. By the way, sorry, just one thing. If e5, then black is able to attack this pawn, and this is absolutely dreadful. That shows you just how weak the kingside pawns are. So let me go back again. This position, rook d6. Uh, Morozevich had seen this and realised that this endgame is just tremendous for black. And his technique was, well, pretty perfect actually. Bishop takes, if pawn takes, then let me see. Um, I guess we could bishop play bishop d5, maybe bishop takes h3 to secure this pawn. I'm not sure which is better. Um, or, let me see, maybe, maybe even bishop c6, just to guard this pawn and the king can come up and take this. Must be winning for black. So, in the game, this happened. And now Black's Knight finds this wonderful square on d5. Um, and, well, the c-pawn is just too strong. This is a nice technique from Morozevich. He could have protected that b-pawn, but instead he realises the c-pawn is too strong and Black can, if necessary, take lots of queen kingside pawns. Uh, knight a7 is simply losing. The, the c-pawn is now going through, but, well... Actually, Navarro was, was completely lost. Secret of good technique is good calculation, and Morozevich had made sure that this was winning. So, after that, the pawn is going through. White will have to give up a knight, but that's that. So, a great recovery from Alexander Morozevich in round two of the Beale Chess Festival. Lost the first one, but now he's back to 50%, and it's going to be very interesting to see how he plays for the rest of the tournament. This is his first classical tournament this year. Do join me again for live coverage of all the rounds, and hopefully I'll have time to do more Game of the Days as this one. Thanks for watching.